This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a product from Masterlock's Magnum series, the M15 Padlock. Now, this is a lock of extremes. On one hand, it has a beefy 2.5 inch wide laminated steel lock body and a very high quality 11 millimeter boron alloy shackle. That shackle is held in place with a ball bearing locking mechanism, which is a vast improvement over the previous Model 15, which by the way is still sold by Master Lock. But on the other hand, this lock retains the same old easy to pick 5 pin core without any security pins, so that's definitely not up to the standards of the rest of the lock. But putting aside the core, I recently destructively disassembled one of these locks to see if there were any other issues of concern. And here's what I found. Both the housing of the core and the main actuator, which on quality locks are usually made from brass, well on this one, they're made from cast zinc. The problem is that zinc has a relatively low melting temperature, so if we can heat this lock up with a plumbing torch, the very first thing to melt is the linchpin of the whole mechanism, and the lock will probably just fall open. At least that's the theory. There's one thing, however, that's standing in our way. There's an air gap in between the housing on the outside of this lock and the laminated steel lock body within. An air gap, of course, is an excellent heat insulator. At least it would be if that housing weren't also made out of cast zinc. Since it is made from a very thin casting, I think it's going to melt away very quickly, probably in the first 20 seconds, after which this lock is going to lose all of its protection. I don't think this is going to be a very fast exploit. Given the mass of this lock, it's going to take a little while to heat up but I'm guessing we're gonna open this up somewhere around three minutes. So let's go down to the garage and see what happens. Okay, we're down in the garage, and as you can see, I have suspended the lock over a tray of rock salt. The reason I do that is so that any dripping zinc won't burn my workbench. You'll also note that I have removed the plastic master lock band around the bottom. The reason I did that was so that I don't have to breathe in any of the burning plastic fumes. Now one safety note about this, the zinc casting around the outside is very thin, making it likely that we're not just going to melt it, but we may even reach the ignition point. If that happens, there will be zinc oxide fumes, which can be hazardous. So not only do I have my garage door open, I'm going to be wearing a respirator. So let me get that on, and then we'll start on this lock.
Okay folks, I went back and took a look at the footage and it turns out my prediction wasn't that far off. I thought we would get into this lock in about 3 minutes and the lock actually opened at the 3 minute and 20 second mark. So it's not a fast exploit, certainly not fast compared to how quickly we could get into this via picking. However, it is worth noting that there are smaller variants of this lock on which this exploit would probably work considerably faster. Maybe that's something we'll try in future videos, but that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.